Robbie. Oh my god, hey, how are you? Good, how are you? So good, thank you. It's so funny running into you today. Right? Here on this corner. <laughs> well, would you like to grab a drink with us? Hell yeah. Awesome, let's go. Yeah. So, spring is pretty in full swing right now. It's getting a little warmer in New York. Mm -hmm. What would you say your ideal spring afternoon is? That's a great question because my back goes out more often than I do. But I do love to just go to Sheep Meadow Central Park with a illegal bottle of rosé and, you know, a book. That's what I love. Oh, beautiful. It sounds beautiful. Right? And also looking at the hot mess. <laughs> That's probably the best part. Yeah, the only part. <laughs> I'm reading. Have you heard of J-Lo's infamous bodega order? I strangely have, yes. <laughs> so what would you say, as a New Yorker, mm -hmm. what is your go-to bodega order? Um, a BLT. A red drink, if you know, you know. And a, and a small bag of Lay's potato chips, yellow bag. Jessica Voss taught me that that's the best for your vocal cords. Oh, wow, that's perfect. Has to do the salt, probably. Yeah, and the oil. Yes. It's good that's for perfect. your cords. So, who is your favorite Broadway composer? Oh, I love that question. Jerry Herman is my favorite. Controversial, I know, because we're going into a basement and that's Stephen Sondheim's lair. However, Jerry Herman for me is like optimism and joy. And, you know, there's always an inspirational lady or man in dress who will walk down a set of staircase and tell you the business. I love that. That's lovely. Right? And what is your favorite song by Jerry Herman? Oh, there's a great song from the Grand Tour. It's called I'll Be Here Tomorrow. Um, when I reopened 54 Below, thank you, humble brag, um, I, I sang it as the closing number just because it just was everything I just said. Optimism, joy, and a sense of perseverance. Love it. We're here. Yeah, we're here. Oh, my favorite place. <laughs> so what will you have? A Manhattan. I mean, come on already here for you. What a time to be alive. So, why a Manhattan? I think the question is why not a Manhattan? Um, there, I think a gorgeous, sophisticated cocktail, specifically the 54 one that have Grand Marnier in them. Uh, and they're just like, you know, we're in a supper club. I know it's a basement. I know Liza did coke over there. It does not matter. We are in a very fancy supper club and you want a Manhattan. That was a perfect answer. Yeah. I don't like to brag. Perfect. So with Pride Month just a couple months away, Oof. you created the Playbills Pride logo campaign. I sure did. Yeah. What inspired you to start that project? Um, a paycheck was what started it. But uh, really, um, I used to be formerly the creative director of Playbill. Um, magazine and Blake Ross, the editor in chief of the magazine, and Adam Hedrick, who was the editor in chief of Playbill.com, uh, created Playbill Pride. And I was brought on board to brand it and uh, create it. And as a gay man myself, thank you, I am seeking offers. Um, <laughs> as a gay man myself, it was important to me to, um, to create something that representation is so important, right? I grew up um, in the eight, I grew, I was born in 76. It doesn't look it. But um, so like all I had was like Ellen, right? And so the more representation you see, the better it is. So being part of that was really beautiful to me. Uh, and getting on the trains after a show is getting out and seeing all these people holding these rainbow headed playbills, which is the only time they've changed their header to something that wasn't just a Playbill branded thing in uh, 140 years, that's wild to me. And that I'm a small part of that is just really, really cool and moving. It's really beautiful, really inspiring. I, I, that's actually in my epitaph, just really inspiring. <laughs> Perfect. What's the most memorable show that you've produced? Oh God, I've done, so much here. We had um, a seven month long series here called Tuesdays at 54, where I was bringing in all sorts of um, famous people and at the same time giving, I gave something like almost 100 people their 54 Below debut in that time, which was really cool. Um, I worked with people like Melissa Erico and Kate Baldwin and Nick Graf Lanzaroni and Nathan Salstone. Um, we're just piling all the names on the floor, but the biggest one for me personally was uh, Jessica Vosk. We did, we were, we worked together for five years that 
who created her album. But a run here was called Being Green. It was right off the tour of Wicked. And this is a fun story. The first night we did the show, um, we were telling the story of Wicked, like being on that tour without using any music from Wicked, which is wild. Uh, but I like a challenge. So we were talking about the No Fly show that she had in, I don't know, Cleveland or somewhere, right? Talk about PTSD. Um, and she's singing Wendy My Wings. Hilarious. Because uh, she's about to do Beaches. Ooh, that's so weird. Um, and the backup singers, Marty Thomas and Marissa Rosen, have confetti guns, uh, which is like a long pole that you twist and confetti shoots out of, right? First <laughs> night of the run. Um, Marissa misjudged where her aim was going and it just shot straight up, hit a light, and all that green confetti just clumped right down into someone's meal. And Marty Thomas just looked over the lip of the stage and said, oh, you really fucked up those Brussels sprouts. <laughs> um, it was <laughs> that is such a wild story. It was nuts. That whole run was nuts. They had to add a whole second row of seating here at the bar um, because we were so full. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So whether as a producer, director, mm -hmm. or performer, what show are you the proudest of? Oh, God. Again, there have been so many. I'm very old. Um, but honestly, like, your first is always your best, right? It's like pizza or sex. Um, it's uh, even when it's bad, it's good. Um, but my favorite, uh, honestly, is Songs from Inside My Locker, which was the first show I ever did here as a solo artist. Um, we it was supposed to be one night. It was truly a one off thing to entertain my friends. And I brought in like a porn star playing tuba, like crazy stuff happens when I do shows. Um, and that became like a run of shows that led to an album that you can stream on Spotify or iTunes by the download. I would like to go to Chipotle this week. And um, it's, it just, it's very, it's very personal and moving to me that anybody can go and hear me sing at any time. Beautiful. Oh, would you like to play a little game with us? I would love to play a little game with you. Awesome. So you're going to be playing some short clips of songs from various musicals. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is tell us the name of the show and the song. Okay. Let's awesome. see. Let's go. I'll start a little easy. Do you promise? Promise. Okay. All right. Don't make me do it. Don't make me go through it. Can somebody get me a drink? It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard to be the bard from Something Rotten. That was Christian Borel. Perfect. Thanks. Yes. And another easy one. Okay. Why not? Uh, yeah. Like it's Borel. That's Vilkeman from Cabaret, um, which is playing somewhere near here, like two blocks away. Literally, yeah. That was good. That's great. Okay. My, my tickets cost less than Cabaret, though. So. <laughs> All right, this one may be a little difficult. Okay. What's your brush, Henrik? Shush. Henrik, goodness, how you cush, Henrik, shush. So that is later from now, soon later, uh, Stephen Sondheim, Little Night Music. Perfect. Wow. Yeah, you got that one. Yeah, sure did. <laughs> Pretty sure I worked on that cast album specifically. Gosh, yeah. Okay, so let's do this one. Okay. Buying on credit is so nice. <laughs> America, West Side Story. That's the film version, though, because the men are in it. Yep. Oh, wow. You know your stuff. I am. Um, yeah. Yeah. I uh, I don't know math. <laughs> I'm not surprised Thanks. that you know this. Thing. <laughs> I'm not surprised that you know it. Mm -hmm. All right. Last one. Okay. Jody, let me prove worthy of your love. That's Unworthy of Your Love, Assassins. Who doesn't love a love duet to Charles Manson and Jodie Foster? I mean, Amazing. You crushed that. Thanks. All right. Well, what what do you have going on that you want to tell us about? So weird. Thanks for asking. Uh, I'm at a club that's called um, 54 Below. May 10th, 930. The show is called Contractually Obligated Because I Am. And uh, hijinks ensue. So I'm going to go learn some lyrics. Great. Okay. Well, I guess we'll see you later. Thanks. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs>